Welcome to section 5.3. All right, general people, we're going to continue our discussion on gas laws. So in the last lecture, we saw how gas characteristics can describe the state of our gas. We talked about these old timey chemists, which were relating these characteristics of gases to each other. Now, remember, they were looking at just two characteristics and keeping the other characteristics constant. So we started out with Boyle and he kept moles and temperature constant. And what he found was that volume was indirectly proportional to pressure. We then jumped to Charles who kept moles and pressure constant. And what he found was that volume and temperature are directly proportional. Finally, Avogadro temperature and pressure were held constant and volume and the number of moles are directly proportional to each other. Now, what you'll notice is I put everything in terms of volume. So what we can do is if we have volume on one side of our proportionality, we can put all the other relationships on the other side. So what I can do is I can take the number of moles, times it by the temperature and divide it by the pressure. And this should be proportional to the volume. Now, instead of using proportional, we can go ahead and use a proportionality constant. And so we can rewrite our equation like so. Now, this isn't the way that this equation is commonly written. It is written like this, PV equals NRT. This is the combined gas law or the ideal gas law. Now, this equation encompasses everything that Charles Boyle and Avogadro did. You don't have to use any one of their equations. You can always use this equation and it'll evaluate a gas going from one state to another in the same way those individual equations could. Now, most gases are going to follow this equation because most of them behave ideally. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about what an ideal gas is going to be. But for now, what we'll note is most gases behave ideally when they're close to about one ATM or less. When you use this equation right here, make sure you put temperature in Kelvin. And the last thing is we have to evaluate R, the universal gas constant. So how do we figure out what R is? Well, we do what all chemists like to do, and that is run an experiment. So I know PV equals NRT. I can rearrange this equation by dividing both sides by NT. So then what I get is the equation R equals PV over NT. So all I have to do is have a certain pressure, temperature, number of moles, and if I measure the volume, I can evaluate what R is. So what we can do is we can go into lab and we can put a gas under standard temperature and pressure or under STP conditions. Now STP is where I have the temperature at zero degrees Celsius and my pressure is one ATM. This is what scientists decided that STP conditions are going to be. So I'm gonna take my equation right here and I'm gonna place a gas under one ATM. I'm gonna take one mole of my gas and I'm gonna put it at a temperature of zero degrees Celsius or 273.15 Kelvin. And then I'm going to measure the volume of gas that I get. It turns out under these conditions, the volume of gas is going to be 22.414 liters. To give you an idea of that volume, here's a basketball for scale. And in this round bottom flask, you will see the volume taken up by 22.4 liters. Now, if I go ahead and get this last piece of data, what I do is I calculate R. So my gas constant R is equivalent to 0 0.08206 liter ATMs divided by mole Kelvin. Now I want you guys to be careful with R. 
this numerical value is associated with these units. What you guys should note is that R comes in many different flavors or varieties. What you guys will notice is that you might have seen an R with a numerical value of 8.314, or you might have seen it as 62.36. These are all the same values. The only difference is these numerical values change with the units associated with them. So if I wanted to measure things in liter tor mole Kelvin, this is the numerical value of R I'm going to use. So all of these are the gas constant. The way that I pick which version I want is based on the units. So if I'm using PV equals NRT, most likely this is the gas constant I want to use, or this is the R that I want to use. So let's go ahead and practice using the gas laws out. Go ahead and evaluate this question. When you are done, go ahead and mark the right answer for your quiz. All right, we're going to start out with PV equals NRT, our combined gas law. What I'm going to first do is I'm going to put everything that is a variable on one side of the equation and everything that is constant on the other side of the equation. Now, it says that the pressure is changing, so I'm going to put pressure on the left-hand side of the equation. It says that temperature is changing, so I'm going to put temperature on the left-hand side of the equation by dividing both sides by T. Now, in a light bulb, I'm not putting in more or less gas. The amount of gas inside the light bulb remains constant, so N is going to be constant. So I'm going to keep it on the right-hand side. R is my gas constant, so I'm going to keep it on the right-hand side. And a light bulb is a rigid container. My light bulb is not increasing or decreasing in volume, so I'm going to put volume on the other side of my equation by dividing by V on both sides. So remember, all of these values right now are constant. So a constant times a constant divided by a constant, well, that's just a constant. And what that tells me is that pressure over temperature is going to be constant. In other words, I can write this as P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So what I hope to show you is that you can use the combined gas laws to generate new gas laws that are streamlined to the question that you are trying to evaluate. Now what I like to do with gas law types of questions is I like to write down all my information. For example, in this question, I have an initial pressure of 1.20 atms. I'm looking for the final pressure, and so this is going to be my variable. Now, it said my initial temperature was 18 degrees. Now, remember, you have to change everything into Kelvin. So simply adding 273 is going to do the trick. And so my temperature is 291 Kelvin. Then the new temperature that I want to evaluate my new pressure at is going to be 85 degrees Celsius. So let's go ahead and change that to Kelvin. So this is going to be 358 Kelvin. Now with all that said, I'm after pressure too. So let's go ahead and rearrange this equation, P1, and I'm going to times both sides by T2, and I still have T1 on the bottom, and this is equivalent to P2. Now that I have this, I can go ahead and put in all my variables. I have 1.20 ATMs, 358 is my temperature 2, and 291 is my initial temperature. And this all equals pressure too. If I go ahead and do this calculation out, I get 1.48 ATMs as my new pressure. Now there's many ways that you could have done this problem. You could have done many different iterations or manipulations of PV equals NRT. 
I'm just showing you guys one way to solve this problem. I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1A.